Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound, and today we're going to talk about the difference between oscillator detuning and beat frequency detuning. And it's a subtle difference, but once you understand it, it's very powerful uh, when you start using it in your favor. I know I always promise no math, no graphs, uh, very little electronic circuitry on these courses, but um, I have to do a little bit this time. And that is music frequencies are exponential. What do I mean by that? I mean that as the pitch goes up, the frequency does not go up evenly. Uh, the frequency actually goes up like this, and it's exponential. Why? Because every octave, the frequency is twice as high as the previous octave. For example, if you hit an A440 tuning fork, it's going back and forth 440 times a second. If I had a tuning fork that was an octave higher, it would be an 880 hertz tuning fork, uh, because every time you go up one octave, you double. So clearly you can see that starting at low bass frequencies, the difference between notes is fairly subtle, and then each octave you go higher, the number of hertz between notes goes up, literally exponentially. How does that affect us in music? Well, in terms of detuning, it's pretty important. Uh, a, a good example is if, if you've ever played in band, what instruments are most annoying when they're out of tune? The answer is piccolos. Why? Because they're very high in frequency and when they're slightly out of tune, you hear it as a beat frequency of, of many hertz. Now, bass player, those of you bass players out there know that if you don't make a face when you play a wrong note, most of the people in the audience won't know that you played a wrong note. Why? Because the difference between an E and an F is only a handful of hertz, whereas up in the piccolo range, it could be very, very many hertz difference between an E and an F. That affects us when we're doing detuning on synthesizers. And so I'm using the siren here. Uh, it's a really great example. And in fact, it does such a good job showing it. I probably won't even show any other synths because they all work about the same way. On the front panel, you have uh, the ability to detune the second oscillator, what they're calling VCO2. So I'm starting out with an init patch, uh, basically a sawtooth wave, single oscillator, uh, beautiful sound. And this is pretty much identical to the Moog Minotaur as well. And if I bring in the second oscillator, there's going to be detuning. I mean, this is an analog synthesizer, but I've worked pretty hard to set both of them very close to each other. Uh, so it should be a very, very slow phasing. And that's a, another beautiful sound. Okay, you can hear it moving. And on the front panel, I have a VCO2 frequency knob. And basically what that does is it offsets whatever note I'm playing on oscillator two. So I could, for example, do a slight detuning like this. But there's a problem and that is, if I have a detuning that I like in the low frequencies, The higher I go, the more uh, that beat frequency is going to increase in speed because we're doubling every octave, right? So here's my beat frequency down here. Now I go up one octave. Another octave, another octave, and as I keep going higher and higher, maybe I like that, probably won't. You, what you really want is that whatever speed of phasing that you create by detuning, you kind of want that to stay with you no matter what octave you're in. That is a special feature called beat frequency detuning. And some synths have it, some don't. Um, but if you have it, definitely make use of it. If you don't have it, um, you can trick regular detuning uh, by, by assigning a constant 
uh, like some on value and then do key tracking and have your detuning get less and less and less as you go up the keyboard. It actually can be done. Um, but on, on the uh, Moog Siren and the Moog Minotaur and the Sub 37 and the subsequent 37, uh, you have the ability to do the beat detuning. And this is one of the ones that you can get to from the front panel without having to use a computer. You certainly can get it to it on the computer. But the first thing I'm going to do is set the tuning back to as straight as I can get it. Get it down here again. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's about as good as you're going to get on analog synthesizer. And honestly, I wouldn't want it to be any better than that. That's why I have an analog synthesizer. I like that subtle motion that I hear every time I play a note. But now, instead of grabbing that knob and detuning it that way, I'm going to use the hold button. Uh, by the way, I have the Arturia Keystep Pro, uh, which I just got and I really like. Um, very easy to use and has a convenient hold button. So I'm going to hit a note. And then while I'm turning this frequency knob, instead of just turning it, I'm going to hold the glide button. Um, I have my little handy dandy sheet and it tells me that VCO beat frequency is done by holding glide and turning the VCO to frequency, which is what I'm going to do. So you're going to hear me set a detuning. Now watch when I change octaves, same detuned uh, beat frequency. And way up top where it's really important, so really, really, really useful to have that. But one thing that's really important to understand is that regular detuning is less noticeable in the low frequencies and more noticeable in the high frequencies, but beat frequency detuning can be more noticeable in the low frequencies than the high frequencies. And so you'll always want to make sure, um, especially if you're blending the two of them, that you really want to try it at its lowest extreme that you're going to play and make sure you like that beat frequency and then go all the way back up at the highest frequencies and make sure you like that beat frequency. And between the two of them, um, you'll be able to come up with exactly the animated uh, motion that you want uh, that's consistent across the whole keyboard. And I'll do the same thing with a perfect fifth. So it's just all around a really musical tool to have in your tool belt if your synth has it. And again, if it doesn't have it, you're basically going to want to set the device that's detuning it on key tracking and make the key tracking less as you go up. So hopefully that'll give you a little more confidence when you're digging in with frequency detuning, beat frequency detuning, or a combination of the two. If you have any questions about Moog products or the Arturia Keystep Pro, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. If you're enjoying the synth clip episode, we have all the rest of them in a playlist down below. And if you have any ideas for a future synth clip, uh, please write it in the YouTube comments. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.